passion for hunting and treasure hunting and finding beautiful things at a bargain price. Hello friends! Welcome to my massive haul video. Yesterday I posted a video of a huge warehouse antique closing out sale that Andrew and I went to. We also went to some estate sales and some garage sales so if you missed that video, like I said I posted it yesterday. So I will link it down below if you want to see how I went shopping and what it was like because it was crazy. I've never seen a place like that before in my life. found some really cute things that I'm really happy with that I think have some good resale value and then I also found some things that I might end up keeping. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to start with the items that I purchased in a lot or a pile from that fellow who owned the store who was closing out. When I walked into the warehouse, the very first thing I saw was piles and piles of boxes for figurines. And this little guy was sticking out of his box, his original box. And this is a little fawn. Her name is Fanny. And she is from 1978, made in Mexico. Just something I end up keeping or I might post her on my Etsy store. She's not worth much more than like $15 if I do resell her. So she was really cute and I'm really glad I picked her up. I have a thing for animals, like ceramic animals, which you might start to see the trend in. The next ceramic animal that I picked up was this little polar bear. He doesn't have any markings. He doesn't say made in Japan or anything like that. The reason I picked him was that every time I've gone to Valley Village for the last month, I've seen these two little polar bear cubs and they're so cute and I just didn't think I could resell them. I wasn't sure what I'd do with them if I bought them because they're just a little upset. But I think that he would go perfectly with them. So even if they're mismatched, I could make a little polar bear family. Something else I picked up to keep for ourselves is this box of um, 1986 hand-painted ornaments. And they're these little like reindeer. They're adorable. I'll show you some close-ups of them. But uh, it's just a set of four and they're in perfect condition. And I was just a sucker for them. I had to have them for Christmas time. So I added those to my pile. Now, in this warehouse, they were like, oh, the good stuff's at the front or in the back. It was, and I was like, um, yeah, well, I'm finding cool stuff back here, so I'm not in a rush. But eventually, I went back there, and there were some really cool pieces, um, like Victorian glass and Chinese pottery and things that I couldn't even tell you what they are, but I knew they were old and special and really expensive. Um, and I think I found this in that room. This might be the only thing I picked up from that room. As far as I can tell, this is a Fenton glass vase. It does have a little spot where there was a sticker. It could have been a price tag. It could have been a brand name. I don't know. So I'm going to research this little guy a little bit more. But I thought it was really cute. And if it is Fenton, it's probably worth about $50 or $60. I also picked up these vintage Ashdale pottery made in England mugs. And they are woodland creatures. I picked up a set of six. There's two of each type of animal. So there's two fawns, two bunnies, and two field mice cups. So the set of six in the original box, they're just stoneware mugs. Really love those. And they're probably worth about $10 a piece. So I'll try maybe to sell them as a set. I haven't decided if I'm going to sell them as a set or in pairs or sets of three or individually. I don't know. If you're a seller, a reseller, can you leave a comment down below and let me know what you would do with these mugs if you were going to resell them like I am. I'm going to show you this little birdie next. I picked up this little box of like vintage ceramic birds. I'm a sucker for animals, like ceramic animals, but I'm especially a sucker for little birds. So I picked up a box of eight of these. I am hoping to start up a planter business this summer so maybe I'll just stick these little guys in there as like bonus little treasures. I don't know. They were too cute to just leave there. I also picked up this Royal Dalton box and this wasn't necessarily something I was particularly excited about but I thought it might have good resale value. Um, it is a collectible um, Charles and Diana wedding cup or mug or something. There's no handle so I don't know exactly what it is but it's just from 1981 Royal Delton England Bone China and it's a commemorative cup and I do know that a lot of people are really big Diana fans or collect um, English royalty 
things. I looked up similar ones and they're selling for anywhere from $25 to $35. And I did not see a box included in those listings. And I know that this box is a little bit damaged. So I probably won't take into factor that it has the original box. I think it'll just be another selling point. I picked up these two little cup and saucers. I do not know much about them and I don't recognize the maker's marks because I don't know a lot about China. But they are so sweet and I really love this one. It's got some hand painted bugs on it. And just the detail and they look so old. So I'm excited to find out more about them. If you're looking at the close up footage and you know what brand these are, please leave me a comment because uh, I do need some help identifying them. But the fellow who was selling them to me wanted $20 for the two of them and he said they're worth a lot. So I look forward to finding out more about those cups. And the last item on this side of the table is this really great horse head vintage tie holder. And the only reason I knew what this was is because I once picked up one of these. It has a bear on it. I, uh, it's hanging in our bedroom on our gallery wall. And Andrew actually does keep his ties on it. I picked that up probably like seven years ago at somewhere in Canada when I lived there. But uh, this is an awesome horse. I think this would be great uh, on a ranch or in a cottage or just for somebody who loves horses. It's wood, it's from the Sirocco Wood Company. And it's from the 1940s, it's a little dirty, I do have to clean it up, but I was really excited about this because lots of people don't even know what they are. <laughs> so I love vintage tie holders. If you're wondering, okay, what did you pay for all this stuff? So far, everything that I've told you about was included in my pile of items I got for $60. So I still have a few more and I'll tell you when we get to the end. But I also picked up this blown glass. I can tell that it was blown because it's got the mark there from where it was taken off of the rod. I don't know if it's called a rod, but that's what I'm calling it. Uh, it's just pink. It's got this little line going around that's adorable. I'm going to use this in my planter business, put a nice succulent or something in it. I just liked the color. I thought it was pretty. I also picked up this adorable little basset hound pup. He has these giant paws. He's in amazing condition. He's just so sweet. My mom already wants to buy him from me because <laughs> she thinks he's the best. And it is made in Germany um, by a company called Orfila. And this just a little vintage doggy. Had to have him, too cute. Right next to the vintage doggy, I did pick up these. <laughs> They're so weird, but I liked that they were made somewhere that I had never seen something made from before. They were made in the USSR, and it's this pair of little gray squirrels and little gray bunnies. I got two of each, and then this really beautiful little brown squirrel, which I'm pretty sure lives with me now. This little candle dish from a company called Mycin. Rather, it's rather old. I can't remember how old, but uh, I recognize the symbol on the back from one of my antique books that I've looked at. And he actually told me he sent away the whole set. He sold the whole set and he must have missed this. So I just picked up this little dish. And this little dish is actually worth $30 online. It has some really pretty flowers on it. So I was really excited about that. Believe it or not, I still have two more items that I purchased from this sale for my $60. I'm going to save my favorite thing for last. This stein. It's from the 80s but it came in its box. It even comes with an original certificate verifying its authenticity. And it has a price tag of $85 on the bottom. So someone was trying to sell it for $85. I did find similar ones online in that price range area. It has the creepiest little man on top. Um, <laughs> but he won't be in my house for long, hopefully. So I'm excited to sell that. The last item that I got from that giant sale for my big pile of stuff for $60 is this little um, Austrian teacup and saucer. It is gold on the inside, which I love gold, so I was drawn to it, but the hand painting on it is beautiful. Um, and there was a price tag on it, so I didn't have to ask for more information. I just was able to look at what was on here. And it says Austrian cup and saucer, Alhambra, which is the style of it. Uh, oh, sorry, it's the pattern. 
circa 1880s and they were asking $80 for it when they were trying to sell it. So everything that I got at the very beginning of the day, it was a good start to the day at that warehouse sale. So $60, I actually spent $66 with tax. And I got, I think I counted 19 items, but that's not including like sets. So I counted all six of these mugs as one item. So I definitely got way more than 19 items individually. I probably got closer to like 30 for $60. And I just want to say that if you ever go to sales and things, don't be afraid to barter. Because he said like I wanted, he wanted $20 for these teacups. He wanted $20 for this. He wanted $15 for like these mugs and a couple other knickknacks. And I just said to him, I was like, I'm not interested in paying $20 for those mugs. And so I made him a low offer of $40 for everything, assuming that he would counter offer. What I was really willing to pay was $60 because I did want to be fair as well. I don't want to just lowball because he was selling out. Um, and so he counter offered with 60 and in retrospect, I could have come back with 50, but I was really glad that I went with $60 for all of it because I got some really great pieces and I didn't want to disrespect him and all of his hard work in gathering the pieces. And I could tell that his stuff really meant a lot to him. And so I'm really happy with everything I got. Hi friends, so I've actually decided to break this video into two parts because it is quite long. Uh, I do have more items to show you from estate sales and garage sales that I went shopping at uh, on that day. And so if you'd like to see the rest of my haul, click on over to part two of this video. There's gonna be a link in the description. And I hope to see you over there.